Three stops on the Kentucky Derby Trail this weekend, and we're going to make all three of them, starting with the Jeff Ruby Stakes in Florence, y'all. Ed DeRosa with Sarah Badwi and Sarah, you're making a stop in person. I know. I'm excited. I, uh, I've been told that I don't need to dress in my construction <laughs> yellow in order to get in. So well, that's good. Uh, pulling some favors for me over there. So I'll get to go for my first visit to Turfway and uh, see what these horses look like in person. Full field for the um, for Jeff Ruby Stakes, as in the meat. Jeff Ruby <laughs> Stakes, as in the meat, to close out the meat at Turfway Park. Or do they run Sunday? I don't know. No, this is it, I think. So must win, mandatory payouts on everything. And the Jeff Ruby Stakes is the last leg of the pick five. Pretty good one. We won't go through all those races, but we will go through the Derby prep race. 100 points to the winner and hit it a bomb interests me most. I was kind of on the fence going into this race, Sarah, whether I'd end up liking him, knowing he'd be the chalk or not. Final piece of the puzzle for me, I'm a numbers guy. A nine on the Ragas and Sheets for the Pataglia, much faster than anyone else. Kenny had some options with this horse. He chooses this spot in McPeak We Trust. I don't know that that's a statement I've ever heard you say before. In no, McPeak typically. You, you mean tis the bomb, though, not hit it a bomb, hit it a bomb. Oh, so that's a sire. Yeah. Yes, which uh, actually, it surprised me, does not have great numbers going nine furlongs. Very small sample size, though. I think tis the bomb, thank you, uh, can get the distance here. Uh, yeah, I think it's possible he comes out of a decent effort in the Bataglia last time out. Um, but I have a little bit more interest in the horse that almost got to him late, <laughs> and that's going to be the number two stolen base. His second last time out was a closing second to Tis the Bomb. He almost just got there. I had a bet on him. I was getting excited for a second. Didn't quite make it happen, but there's a little bit more distance for him to work with this time going the synthetic route. And the blinkers do go on for this horse. I don't know why that is, but anytime it happens, it's something I pay attention to. Uh, Mike Maker is 10% first time blinkers, and he gets that little bit extra ground to work with, like I said. Now, he did have some traffic trouble in the stretch in there. I don't know that it would have changed the outcome, but I'm looking for a cleaner trip for this horse this time. Try to beat the favorite with this horse who is 7-2 on the morning line. Anybody else interest you in this field? Uh, Tawny Port, not necessarily from a win end, but I do think with Stolen Base, the former Baffert who won the El Camino on this, surf, not this exact surface, but synthetic, going nine furlongs. Uh, both should take money, I think. Great escape as well uh, for Rudy Bursette. So maybe if Tawny Port is in that third, fourth, fifth choice range in a field of at least 11, I would say, even after scratches, uh, that to me might be the play underneath. But I do think that tis the bomb, uh, the one to be. But as always, uh, price sensitive. I certainly wouldn't want any lower than two to one on tis the bomb. And I think with some gravitating towards stolen base and others, should get the price, uh, but super fascinating race. Uh, you have several trying synthetic for the first time. The nine furlongs, of course. Who do you think's on the lead early? That's a good question. Um, I have no idea. I'm I don't know either. Like, <laughs> I don't know either. I was that? like, great question. Uh, I go through and I kind of look at the running styles of everybody in the race, and I have a lot of stock clothes and nobody that right. says speed yet in this field. Um, I think if somebody's aggressive early, it could be interesting, or there could just be a really slow pace early on. Um, another horse that I did want to touch on really quickly, the number eight red run going out for Steve Esmussen had a great weekend at the fairgrounds. You were there, uh, Echo Zulu at the center chalky prices great mm. wins by both of them but this is this horse's first time trying the synthetic and he won on the turf last time out actually beating stolen base and dewagic chief who's in here as well and when i think gun is that runner, how you say that thank you that's how i say it that's, i don't know if it's i'm right. sure that's close, <laughs> close enough um when i think gun runner i don't think turf no and, and he won on the turf from post 11 he is the only winner by gun runner on the turf. That's a pretty impressive uh, stat to have. Yeah. And something about gun runner that I just found out today, 30% with his synthetic routers, small sample size, but 30%. That's and good. I've never and seen something like that. He's before. 20 plus overall on synth and they figured it'd be better routing given who gun runner is and was. Right. So uh, yeah, kind of interesting. I mean, Steve, whether he takes money or not, if it's in the not category though, I do think on pedigree alone, maybe worth a flyer. Yeah, could be interesting. I don't know that he'll get the right pace set up since neither of us have a clue who's going to be that early right. front runner. <laughs> but somebody that I gave a look to, um, especially with that sire set of 
30 percent yeah which very, I pretty interesting. very interesting is that from the sire moves it's actually not okay you but dug that out yourself but it once, will be once once sire moves comes out for uh for saturday i'm sure it'll people. be in there yes oh. new report that we're working on over at horse racing nation we didn't tell anybody to like and subscribe yet oh, so please do, please do that make sure you get tuned in for all of the future videos that we'll be doing plenty of other great content on our youtube channel as well horse center road to the kentucky derby Lots of great stuff coming yeah, out, picks, especially as contender we get, profiles. Yeah, I mean, which you might get some original footage. Maybe at Turfway, possibly. Yeah. All Definitely. right. Well, that's Turfway. Uh, about what? Ten minutes later. Twenty. Oh, I was going to say <laughs> twenty hours south, down I seventy five is uh, the Florida Derby mm -hmm. at Gulfstream Park. Uh, probably of the three this weekend, uh, well, not probably has produced the most Derby winners, although Arkansas. Certainly with uh, its share of uh, big stars, Triple Crown winner, American Pharaoh, most recently. But Florida Derby, Classic Causeway, a little bit of a surprise maybe out of the Tampa Bay Derby. I actually think he's going to be favored. I was surprised to see made the co-third choice with Charge It at 7-2. to two. Uh, But Simplification, White Abario also in the mix. Uh, pretty top-heavy group of 11. Those four, certainly the ones who are going to take all the money. Absolutely. And I think really this is the first derby prep that I've looked at so far where I felt it was a very contentious group because they're all equally good versus a group where it's like, I don't know where to go here. <laughs> Everybody's kind of on the same page and not necessarily future stars. Um, this is a race where I feel like we agree on who the favorite is going to be and who's going to take money. I know we have some very strong disagreements <laughs> on who's going to take money in the Arkansas Derby, but I agree that Classic Causeway is the likely favorite. He's not the horse that I have any interest, though. I think he's nah, just a little bit too slow. Maybe it's wishful thinking because I'm against as well of the four. Uh, I would rank him fourth of the top contenders, but uh, you know, the last two were good. You know, Gulfstream caters to the front end. He's certainly capable of being there and going on with it. So understand the love. Not for me, though. I actually prefer White Barrio. Part of that is just thinking he might be third or fourth choice even off that win. But uh, the Brisnet speed ratings say he stacks up with the others. Charge it, I would say, if he's the favorite, I'm going to have to be against third career start two turns for the first time against grade one company. It's a big ask for me though. Those are the two. And then simplification who's the morning line favorite is by not this time uh, who has epicenter and who certainly has done well going this distance. And if it rains would fit, those are the three toss classic causeway, but I do have white of on top. Interesting. I think that while he's obviously a legitimate contender, and I think he's a horse that it benefits him that he doesn't need the lead, where I feel like a lot of others either need the lead or are going to be pressing early. I think he was also kind of lucky to win the Holy Bowl with Simplification's slow start. I think mm. Simplification was much the best in that race. And to say that the Simplification showed that he can also close and he's tactical, well, maybe that wasn't what he prefers to do. He's going to probably sit a a closer um maybe like second flight in this race um i think that his effort last time out avoiding all the trouble with high oak and galt in the fountain of youth certainly impressive enough and i think he's the deserving morning line favorite i think since we both said classic causeway goes off as the likely favorite in here um I don't think Charge It will be favored. If he is, I'll probably look elsewhere. This is the one time that I'm going to say that I feel like the odds will probably influence my opinion because I do think there's horses that are equally stacking up against each other. Mm. But this horse has a big pedigree, and if anybody's capable of getting a horse ready to go off from a maiden win to the Florida Derby, it's Todd Pletcher, who's had plenty of success in this race. I think he's interesting because I really liked him on debut. And I also like the horse that did beat him in his first start, Volcanic. Volcanic mm. comes back to finish third to Classic Causeway in the Sam F. Davis. So not exactly unflattered. Um, I think he's got a decent shot. Maybe if he's the third choice, that's the horse for me. Yeah, um, no, I agree. It's, it's price dependent. And Todd, to me, this is kind of his specialty. And he's won the Derby twice, won almost every other big race. But I think back to a horse like Magnum Moon, uh, who hadn't even run as a, a two-year-old, he got him ready for the Arkansas Derby. And then after that, the kind of the tank was dry because it all went into, okay, we got to get to the Derby. And he got there. Charger could go either way. Maybe today's the day. Then he'd be really hard for me to like in fourth career start off five weeks. Or maybe it's a prep. They just get him the nine furlongs and he's kind of a sneaky play 
five weeks from now at a better price since he didn't win. So certainly the talent is there, uh, but whether the price and uh, success will be on Saturday, I'm not sure. Yeah, and I think while it's hard to look outside of those top four that we kind of mentioned, if you're looking for a price to kind of complete your tries or you super read my mind, yeah, or anything underneath, um, I, strike hard. The one horse, 20 to 1, morning line. What has he really done wrong? He put the blinkers on a few starts ago and finally figured out how to switch leads in the stretch after not doing so for a pretty long time. And then Junior Alvarado gets back on, who's had some success with him, finished first and second with him. Um, I think that that's pretty interesting jockey change. They want the rider who's done well with him. I love his chances to hit the board if they do end up going fast early with all these horses that kind of want the lead or need the lead. He's going to sit a stocking or closing trip, and he's done well at Gulfstream. He finished second to simplification. So I think he's a little bit interesting. I don't exactly love the rail for a horse that's not going to be up early with the early flight. Um, and then another one I looked at was O Captain, who was, what, 80-something to one <laughs> in his third in the Fountain of Youth. Maybe a little lucky in there with all the drama on the right. turn, but – only his fourth lifetime start. That was his first time routing. And I think the jockey change to Joel Rosario is pretty telling. I think a lot of times, and it's great to pick a winner and we want to say we were right. This is a tough spot for me because, I mean, really simplification, charge at White Barrio. If there were a clear third choice of those three, that would be who I would most want to bet. So maybe what's more important is not, okay, one of these three has to win. It's why I like these three. They're all going to take money. But you hook them up with a strike hard in second or no captain, you're going to crush the race much more than if you box those three in an exact and it comes back 820. So uh, I am definitely with you in, in looking to be creative underneath. Multi-race wager-wise, Classic Causeway, the only one I'm definitely tossing and haven't looked earlier to see if maybe there's a similar price multi-race-wise to hook up with the logicals here. But, uh, I mean, I, I like the way you're thinking that vertically – I don't think all three are going to be in the try. So if you get the right one in there and take your stand, you do all right. Right. Absolutely. Shall we move on? Let's move on. We went south from Turfway. Now we're going to go west from Gulfstream Park across the Mississippi River to Hot Springs, Arkansas, home of the Arkansas Derby at Oaklawn Park. Formerly three weeks out. This is a big, big shift on the Derby Trail with the Arkansas Derby now in Florida Derby Day, five weeks away. They get one of the Baffer uh, transfers and doppelganger. They get the Philly and Secret Oath. Certainly really spices things up. And they get Cyberknife, who I'm interested in, maybe not as a win candidate, but as a win bet candidate, because you and I had a disagreement regarding which between he and Rebel Stakes winner in Oho would take more money. And uh, I think it's going to be Cyberknife. Before we get to that, though, Secret Oath, the favorite. And deservingly so. Yes. Um, to go back to our debate, it's <laughs> seeming like you're going to get to be right for once um, with all the uh, people of Twitter kind of taking your side that Cyberknife is going to be the shorter price than Unoho. I don't get it, but Brad Cox horses get bet, and um, I've been wrong plenty of times, so I'm sure that how this is looking so far, I'm going to be dead wrong about this. I do think Unoho does finish ahead of him in this race, but back to Secret Oath. Only one to crack the 90s as far as buyer speed figures mm -hmm. in this field. Uh, very deserving favorite in here. If this is the time for her to take on the boys, this is not the toughest field in which to do so. Uh, her wins in the Martha Washington and the Honeybee were impressive. She doesn't need the lead. She'll sit back and close into whatever pace is on or not. Um, she deserves a shot, and I think that she's a very likely winner of this race. She's going to be a pretty short price, though. She is uh, given, it's, I think, a decent field. I agree with you. It's a good spot. She's not running into Forbidden Kingdom or Messier. who are running into each other next week in the Santa Anita Derby. But uh, the progression, if things go well here, she'd get five weeks to the Kentucky Derby if they go well enough. Or maybe they say, eh, maybe not that. But the Oaks, and she got a really good prep for that. So love the spot. Love that they're taking a chance. Just don't love the price. And as I told Ron on his podcast, it's a catch-22 because if she runs lights out and wins, she'll probably be over bet in the Kentucky Derby. So that's the consolation prize. Can take another swing against her then. But Philly against boys with the success she's had already, to me, spells underlay. But I actually do think she's the most likely winner. I'm just not interested in 2-1 to one or 5-2. to two. 
Fair enough. Who are you interested in uh, other than cyber? I, I do like cyber knife and we, the people would be the other one. Uh, this is just strictly, you know, I think with secret oath in here as the favor, I think this is an opportunity where, okay, if you handicap this race, which I did and say, well, you who, did. <laughs> who are the other <laughs> likely winners? I, I think you're getting a premium with her presence in here. I think if secret oath were a male who was coming out of, you know, a similar allowances, let's say Cyberknife, I think Cyberknife would actually end up being the favorite, but you have the Philly factor. And to me, even though we're not going to get eight to one, probably more like seven to two or four to one, I think that's fair enough. I thought that was a good race last out. I know Flo is Brad's guy. They have a long-term steadfast relationship, but Flo's agent, Doug Bradar, knows how to politic an attack room. If he really wanted to be on We the People, even with Brad in here, I think Doug would have made that move and figured it out. I see it as a sign of confidence that Flo sticks with this guy in Cyber Night. I think that's interesting. I think that I look at it as like they have such a longstanding relationship. That, they do. But I mean, Flavie and Pratt knows that. No, well, and that's the thing. <laughs> By no means is it a jockey downgrade. And I feel at this level, it's rarely an upgrade either, but... Flavian's one of the best in the world right now. So certainly if you like We the People, and I know Flo has his detractors and he's, you know, facing criticism as anyone does in any profession, but Flavian, you might even be happy about the move. But to me, I see it as, as a sign of confidence with Brad and Cyber and I. Fair enough. Um, who's, who's on the lead here? Kavod. Kavod, oh, very good. I yes. think. Yeah. I think it's going to be a slow pace, though. No, um, and in fact, Mitch uh, Rowe, fairgrounds when we sponsored the race etc and i heard him talking to scott shapiro uh and there was definitely some send talk from the rail so yes absolutely that is the plan there. yeah and blinkers come off for this horse and i think that the reason i do see a reason why they might be doing that it could just be my speculating but this horse was a little bit headstrong in his last couple of starts kind of pulling early maybe they take the blinkers off get him to settle down and go a little bit slower on the front end he saved something for the rest of the race he was fourth last time out in the rebel um, kind of just caught late by the closing horses, Unoho up the rail, Barber Road, um, et cetera. But I don't know that he's good enough. And he also has to deal with more distance in here. So it would have to be a pretty soft pace for him to kind of last. But this is a horse that I consider maybe maybe he gets that super easy lead. Maybe the blinker's coming off. He, you know, saves his race for the end and just holds on to Hangs win or something yeah. in here. But I, I would consider this horse to be in the exotic somewhere for sure. Um, one that we don't have anywhere, but that I think we should talk about really quick is Barber Road. Yes. He's hit the try in all of his races except one. Ultra consistent, faced a lot of these before, doesn't need to be anywhere near the lead and still runs. A lot of people have a lot of interest in him. Yeah, and uh, I think with this race, uh, decent sized field again, kudos. It's all three for getting nice size fields. Kavod, you mentioned being on the front end, Barber Road, consistent. Another situation where I'm pretty comfortable with the three, we the people, Secret Oath and Cyberknife. In my mind, the winner comes from one of those three. That doesn't necessarily mean that's the play for the trifecta, though, of course. So uh, I would say I prefer Barber Road to Kavod. It's looking head to head there. But uh, either one, given their run styles, I think just sticks around and, you know, whether it's plotting in Barbara Rhodes' case or Kavod hanging on, uh, could be one of the two to spice things up underneath. Yeah. No, I think, like, today is the day where I was like, oh, the Derby is really actually kind of soon, getting the Kentucky Derby fever, yeah. got to figure out all and the 100-point race is starting last week. It's great, exciting. Yeah. You had Sunland as well, yeah. UAE Derby. But, yeah, for whatever reason, this sort of five-week stretch, spring, Keeneland opening, yeah. that, that really – ushers it in i share your view ready for the lightning round sure let's go <laughs> all right does the winner of the kentucky derby come out of one of these three preps potentially <laughs> of course if if the winner of the florida derby is who i think it is yes all right uh of all the runners this weekend in the derby preps which one not talking winning this weekend which one would you think is most likely to actually win the Kentucky Derby? As in, who do I think is not going to win this weekend but could win the Derby? Well, it doesn't matter what they do this weekend. Okay. Who Who's your top prospect running this weekend to win the Kentucky Derby? Uh, it's, it's 
still charge it. I mean, yeah. I, I think a lot of the stories you would have to just totally bomb on Saturday for me to be off the bandwagon. So what do you think? Uh, I would say charge it's there. I'm a little nervous about the four career starts. Um, two. <laughs> two what? He's only had two. Well, I meant that the Derby oh, yes, would be yep. his fourth career start. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, the, the Philly – I think is really interesting, but I think that she's going to meet the tougher Colts in the Derby. Right. I, I don't think this is them. Yeah, no, I'd say that's right. And and otherwise, I, I mean, just looking at the numbers, really across all of them, you said it. What secret oath? She's the only one in that group. Right. Ninety plus buyer. Uh, it, it does seem like the Santa Anita Derby, which probably will have the shortest field of all these races we're going to talk about, is going to have the two best. I think so. So, I think so. Looking forward to that. Yeah, but, uh, absolutely. All right. I guess that's it for the lightning round. Lightning. Two questions. Two, well, it's <laughs> lightning. It's quick. It's fast. Yes. Yes. I mean, the question is, who's going to be the shorter price, Cybernet or Unoho? But it's, well, that's, we, we already asked that. No, no doubt there's, in my there's, mind. Uh, there's no need to continue that yeah. discussion. Uh, well. I, I'm going to owe you some coffee. Speaking of <laughs> continuing. Go to picks.horseracingnation.com because Super Screener, now available for the Derby preps. By now, you get it all through Derby. The whole like triple and subscribe. Crown. The whole Triple Crown, yeah. actually, yes. Yeah. So a lot of great info throughout the trail, hopefully provided by me and you and you and Brian Natto in another video. Yeah, very excited to talk to him, El Gulfstream Park expert that he is, and uh, get his views on the Pick 5, Florida Derby Day Pick 5. So that'll be coming up shortly. Definitely want to stay tuned for that. Somebody knows a lot about <laughs> Gulfstream more so than I do. So and, uh, just good stuff. Very, very good at expressing his opinion, I feel. He's, I do. I do, too. Yeah, he's, it's going to be fun. Looking forward to watching that. So mm -hmm. thank you for watching us. Like and subscribe. Watch her other video. Hopefully you'll have some live stuff on the gram and TikTok from Turfway. Definitely. That'd be fun. Mm -hmm. All right. That's it for us. We'll be back. Well, you'll be back next week. I'm on spring break with the kids, so you'll have to find someone to go over these races. I'm sure uh, plenty mm -hmm. of options. The, the wheels are turning. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Proud Mary keeps on burning. All right. That's it for us. I'm Ed. She's Sarah. Good luck. <laughs>